Hello everyone. As you might notice from my Vimeo account, I was a huge fan of Softimage package, but about a year ago Autodesk decided to discontinue it, so I had no choice but to find a new new like main software for me. So I decided to choose Houdini and uh, after about a year and a half of uh, going and digging it, I finally have uh, some confidence and uh, can show you some tips and tricks I learned uh, during this uh, time. So I decided to start with a uh, tutorial on a uh, Plexus because uh, you are probably familiar with this uh, After Effects plugin. Uh, about three years ago, I think uh, I, I made a uh, Plexus uh, for Softimage, and it looked like that. And uh, today I'll try to show you to how to recreate the same effect in, in Houdini. So let's let's do it. Uh, first of all, I have a Plexus object. Uh, it's uh, just a sphere, and uh, I need to first uh, need to create uh, base uh, points and animate them somehow. So I have a sphere and uh, I make an ISO offset, so I, I create a volume from this uh, sphere and scatter some points. And the second thing I want to do with it, uh, I want to animate them. So I use a mountain node for that, but uh, before mountain node will work properly, uh, I need some normals. Uh, so I just created with point wrangle, it's most convenient and fast way, and I create a vector capital N attribute, and it's just a normalized point position for, for each point. So now I have a normals. Uh, the second thing is uh, apply mountain, and I use a uh, animated offset, so it's just a frame number divided by 100, so it changed over time, and it make these points uh, to move somehow. So now I have a source geor, it's a good thing to do to just uh, create a null node or with a meaningful name so you can easily refer to it uh, later so it uh, will be source points and now some like uh, the algorithm because we behind plexus so I, I create this uh, pretty basic uh, presentation of how it works so I have a for each pointer I have some points around it and I search within radius and just select uh, points uh, inside this radius. The next thing for these points I just create primitives connected which connected to main point and then make a uh, transparency depend on, on the length of each primitive. So it's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll try to show you how it works uh, in Houdini. Okay, so here I have my Plex node uh, with some Vex code, which actually creates uh, this uh, Plexus effect. I'll just uh, walk you through, so don't be afraid of some programming involved. It, it's not that hard. So first of all, I have a search radius uh, set to ridiculously, ridiculously high number, and so I want my uh, code to search through almost uh, through whole scene, and uh, it's a couple parameters uh, which I can control from outside. So it's max max amount of points uh, for each point to connect connect to, and max distance between. Uh, center and found point so I can control it from here and it's just uh, for convenience uh, so how it works uh, first of all I have to deal with uh, something called uh, point cloud in our Houdini so every time I need to search something within a like points I have to use this uh, PC open which means point cloud open function 
and it basically is the same uh, same way you use uh, files for reading and writing in a C or C++ language. So you create a handle and associate it uh, with uh, some structure in a memory. Uh, so for PC open function, I, I already have this uh, vex function reference open. So uh, PC open, this function opens a point cloud file and queues up access blah 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 so you can do like check this thing later i just go through and show how it works so i open um, uh, point cloud for uh, its uh, first uh, geo input and uh, it uh, works with uh, point positions uh, searcher center is my current uh, point position and I should uh, I tell it to search within search radius and return max amount uh, of points. Uh, uh, next thing I do this uh, PC iterate. So I just go through uh, all points uh, this PC open function have found for me. And for each one, I do PC import. So from this handle, I just to take a point position or found point and store it in a pause or it's a vector variable. Uh, then I do just a very simple check if distance between new point like which have this pause as a position and my current um, current point uh, position is uh, less than max dist, I get uh, the same way. So I use the same PC import uh, to get point number for current for founded point, uh, stored its its number, and then create new primitive and uh, just uh, add uh, current point and this founded point uh, to this primitive. So I, I basically just uh, grab a two points and create a line between them. Technically, that's it. Uh, it's it's uh, already do what what we need to do from from the plexus, and as you can see, it uh, it works uh, almost uh, in real time, even on my pretty basic uh, laptop. So I can go for more points, and it still will be responsible enough. I mean, on five thousand, it's already started to lag a bit, but it's it's a huge number. So I, I go back for 100. It's easier to show things on that. Um, next things I think I have to deal with, it's uh, duplicates of primitives. So because uh, how I, I create this uh, algorithm, uh, it will create uh, two same polygons for each point. Uh, for each pair of points, uh, because uh, when I have this uh, point as a current and found this one as a point within a radius, I just create this line, but then uh, I have to do the same one for this as a current point and it will find this uh, within a radius and just create a duplicate, so you can easily see it if I just uh, switch on polygon numbers and you see it's like overlap, so it means uh, it has two polys uh, here. So I, I just use a clean node and consolidate point and fix overlaps. So if you, as you can see, it just deletes uh, unnecessary polygons. So now I have clean topology and can go for to next part. Okay, so the next big part is uh, dealing with the transparency of each polygon. Uh, I have to measure the length of each one and uh, as it grows uh, bigger, it should uh, be more and more transparent and then finally just disappear. So to do it, uh, I first of all do this facet node with uh, unique points, it makes her uh, sure that uh, for each polygon I have uh, only the polygon just between two points, not like a long ones or some going somewhere. Uh, next thing, uh, I just measure it with a, of course, measure node and it makes a uh, perimeter attributor 
for each polygon and next I promote this uh, attribute from from primitive to points so uh, just do first match so for each polygon uh, each point uh, uh, it connects to uh, will have a attribute or store in uh, their length of, of this uh, polygon so I just uh, do some color now so it will be white and uh, this one it's a uh, um, vex code once again so uh, I'll just show you how it works uh, so I grab uh, max destination from this uh, parameter and it's actually connected or so I just uh, copy paste uh, channel from from here so if I have point uh, six four one here it will be the same one over here so I have uh, stored it as a max destination and then I just create a float variable called alpha and uh, use a fit function so for each point it takes a perimeter variable which uh, is uh, actually the length as I said before and uh, make a, like a linear proportion so for lengths are below or equal zero the alpha will be one and for uh, perimeter uh, equal or bigger than the max distance max destination it will be almost zeroed out so I, I just use one percent and uh, it's it's actually maker the thing I, I needed so as their polygons get longer uh, they just uh, became more and more transparent and then just just disappear that's it okay and here I have some like final touches uh, which are actually not uh, really necessary but uh, in my opinion it just make it uh, look a little bit better so um, first of all I'd like to make a uh, uh, more interesting look for each uh, polygon so it's not just like a linear I wanted to have some central point and it's gonna be a little lesser a pack a pack you compared to what it has on both ends so I use a for each node for that or uh, it just or it's it's very very straight thing so uh, for each polygon I resemble it so technically I just divide it uh, into halves and have a um, central point uh, as a group uh, called meet so and then apply a very easy expression to it so I just make the alpha for this uh, central point to be uh, uh, one half of the alpha from the first point so it's just and it makes so if I compare now we can see on on this one how it changes so it's a bit more interesting look as for me and the last thing you can try to do is uh, use this uh, fuse uh, node to um, make uh, just just a fuse uh, uh, points connected to here so uh, and uh, what it makes uh, it uh, make their transparency for each uh, uh, polygon the same for this point so it looks like that uh, it's uh, I don't know I mean I, I like it better this way but you can easily skip this one and it still will look good enough and then as I said it's it's good to have a just a pass through null node to with a meaningful name and some color coding here so you can easily find her and refer to it later so basically that's that's it for now uh, I hope you like it and uh, I'll try to make a new uh, tutorial next week so let's let's uh, see how it will work out or see you next week cheers <laughs>